And that night there was a voice from above and it said, I've got good news and I've got bad news. Now the good news is, yes, they do play baseball up here. And the bad news is, you're pitching tomorrow. <laughs> was uh, playing t-ball and his father said, you want to play baseball when you grow up? The boy said, no, I'd rather play basketball. Basketball, he said, you don't know anything about basketball. And the little boy said, oh, yes I do. I already know how to drool. <laughs> Another little boy had a very bad stutter, and his Sunday school class was going to have uh, sell Bibles to make some money. So the little boy said, uh, I, I, "I want to buy a sell a b -b 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 Bible too." And the teacher said, "Oh, you can't. Let the others do it." He said. No, 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 I, I, I want to sell Bible. So she finally reluctantly gave him the Bible and away he went. He came back later, he sold all his Bibles. And she said, oh my goodness, how did you do that? He said, I knocked on the door and I said, you want to buy a, a Bible? Or do you want me to read it to you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was another little boy that went to Sunday school. And the teacher told him, he said, God is everywhere. He'll take care of you. And the little boy said, I know, teacher, he's in our bathroom. He said, your bathroom? What makes you say that, Johnny? He said, well, every morning, my father comes and knocks on the bathroom door and says, my God, are you still in there? <laughs> okay, the other day I had to go to the doctor. And the nurse came into the waiting room and she said, because of the HIPAA uh, privacy laws, I can no longer call you by your first name. So, will a lady with the hemorrhoids please follow me? <laughs> well, there was another lady that was going to the doctor and she was 80 years old a grandmother, and the doctor said, when you come to the doctor, please bring all your pills. So the doc she said, okay, and she did. He looked at the pills and he said, do you know that that pill right there is a birth control pill? And she said, I know, it helps me sleep. <laughs> he said, I guarantee you, there is nothing in that pill to help you sleep. And she said, well, this is what I do. I take that little pill and I grind it up and I put it in my granddaughter, 16-year-old granddaughter's orange juice. <laughs> that way I sleep very well. <laughs> said, you know, I, every Christmas I give my grandkids checks and I never say thank you. The other one said, well, I do the same thing, but I, uh, they also say thank you. And the other one, and the others all want to come and visit within a week's time we call. She said, what in the world's your secret? She said, 
I don't sign the checks. <laughs>
coming up next. Uh oh, your battery go dead? <laughs> Giddy up. Teeth appeared and he 
he started to growl, not moving a muscle, just <laughs> He did that for about 10 seconds, and then stopped, relaxed, everything was okay, and came to be petted. Whatever it was that was in that corner, apparently had decided that it did not want to tangle with the merry mad beetle hound <laughs> and left the room. We were immediately over to the table, moved it, the lamp, nothing there, and it's been a mystery to us ever since. And if any of you know the answer of what was in that corner, please let me know. <laughs>
because these experts are usually relatives, <laughs> friends, they're close to you, and this is going to kind of hurt their feelings a little bit. But it has to be done because you will not reach your goals if you have somebody constantly telling you that you never will. And it also means that you have to become a bumblebee too because you never will reach the goal unless you yourself, in your heart, in your mind, believe that you can do this. Believing is the secret.
uh, revive the lost art of ventriloquism today.
And what have the rich man? What have the rich man? Oh, oh yeah, the rich man. He died too. And he was buried. I bet you he had a great big tombstone at the head of his resting place. Oh, I don't know because it didn't do him any good. Why that? Because he went to Hades or hell. Hell! Yes. <laughs> oh my. So I die. <laughs> and and Come on, get it out there. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say something else. Yeah, but you did. <laughs> anyway, he was in torment. What do you mean by torment? He had suffering and, and pain excessively. Oh, my. Oh, my. And he was said, get me out of these flames. In the flames? He was in the fire? And he burned up? He was in the fire, but didn't burn up. Oh my, oh my. <laughs> and he looked up, and he saw Lazarus in the far distance, and he said, The far distance? Yeah. It's far up there. <laughs> <laughs> and he shouted out to him, he said, Father Abraham, Father Abraham, please bring Lazarus down here to, and let him dip his finger into a little water and wet my lips. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh boy, it's all guy. Yes. And Father Abraham said, look at son, you've had it so good all your life, and Lazarus had nothing, and now Lazarus is being comforted. You are in torment. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and. Oh, it's, 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 it's. Get it out, get it out. <laughs> uh, 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 it, 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 it. Come on, come on. Is Lazarus in heaven? Yes. Oh, goody, goody, don't drop. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So what? <laughs> I want to know. So what? But the rich man said, he called out to Father Abraham again, and he, he said, Bring me some water. No, I don't have any water for you. He said, Please send Lazarus to my father's house. Oh, I have five brothers, please, go oh, and warn them, 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 whoa, whoa. And, and they repent. Uh, what's that? Father Abraham said, look at, they have the scripture, they have the Bible, and in there it forms them and warns him and warns him time again what not to do. Yeah, right, right, right. And, and, uh, get it out there. <laughs> uh, then, the rich man said, well, please, please, Father Abraham, They won't. You forgot it, did you? No, you forgot it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Father Abraham said, uh, He said what? Well, you're supposed to say, The rich man said, But they won't bother. They won't bother with the leaving it. Father Abraham said, no, no, they won't repent. It doesn't matter if they have Moses and the prophets. It doesn't repent. They won't repent if someone raised it from the dead and visits them. Yeah, that's right. 
So, so he was saying they got the Bible, and that should be enough. That's right. They had the Bible, and that should be enough. Yeah. See you guys. Bye now. <laughs>
dressed up to introduce our next act. <laughs> Come on, Burn. <laughs> so I never know quite what Burns gonna do, so I figured I'd surprise him too. And the show up. <laughs> Dressed a little bit differently. So let me come down here and get my introductory notes while he's getting set up. So it's always a great treat to have Burns Stillwell on our stage. He's a great storyteller, whether he's performing with the Reader's Theater Troupe or like what he's doing today, which is reminiscing through storytelling. So let's put up the slide. Here's Burns Stillwell with It's the Children. Well, good afternoon. I hope most of you are happy and contented here at the village. Yeah, yeah. You're like me, every once in a while, I kind of miss some of the things from the old neighborhood. We lived in a great neighborhood. It was such a warm place. The people were so friendly. And one of the reasons I think that brought us together was the fact that every summer, they close off part of our street and we'd bring out tables and chairs, and we would have a potluck. And people would bring dishes to pass around, you know. And there were people my age coming, and there were younger people with kids. Kids, lots of kids. And it seemed like each kid had a dog, but they were welcome too. And another one of the things that, that, that they did in this neighborhood was solstice. When that came along, that was party time. And there, one of the families would have, host a party, and uh, we would go to their home, and there would be some snacks and, and maybe, uh, maybe live music, and everyone would bring a bottle of wine, and we would talk well into the night, really get to know our neighbors and know their families. And it was just a nice, warm uh, neighborhood. I used to call it uh, the neighbor, neighborly hood because it was, uh, it was a, a cozy place. But as I said earlier, it's the children. The children that I miss the most. And one of the things that the kids would do would be uh, at Winchell School, which is just a short distance away, when recess time came, we knew it, because the kids would be out yelling and screaming and running around and laughing. Child laughter, man. Doesn't it get you? It does me. And those kids were special, I think. Every Independence Day, July the 4th, about 10 o'clock in the morning, you would hear this rumble going on. And if you went and you looked out at the sidewalk, here came a parade, a parade of children from tots up to teenagers. And they were pushing their bicycles and their tricycles and towing their wagons and scooters and anything with wheels decorated out in bunches of red, white, and blue. Even the dogs would have neckties or, or bows around their necks in those patriotic colors. And they'd go down to the corner and they'd hang a right and they'd go on down to Winchell School. And then the adult that was with them would run up the stars and stripes on the school flagpole. Then those kids would circle around that flagpole, put their hands on their hearts, look up, and pledge allegiance to the flag. I think that was really special. But you know, the thing that I remember most, the most endearing thing that happened to me personally, happened in late October one year. It was one of those idyllic days, you know, when the, it just, a little bit crispy, not too warm, not too cool. The, the leaves had come down in golds and reds and greens and lavenders, and the whole neighborhood was just a blanket or a riot of color. I had a big dog about that time. Every afternoon about four or five o'clock in the evening, he'd come and sit and stare at me. Did you ever do something and think, something or somebody staring at me, and you look up and sure enough, somebody's staring at you. Well, I would look down and he'd kind of cock his head like, it's time, it's time, and I'd say, yeah, 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 okay. So I'd get his leash and we'd take a little walk for two or three, four blocks. This one afternoon, 
I was out walking with him, and I came up to the corner, and I see the twins on the corner. Oh, they were eight or nine years old at the time. They're both standing there with leaves in their hands. And I come up, and the boy said, hey, mister, you want to buy some leaves? <laughs> and the little girl said, yeah, buy some leaves. I said, kids, there are a million leaves all over the place. Why would I buy leaves? And then that sweet little girl with her great smile and big brown eyes said, these are special. They're hand-picked. <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? And then the boy added, and today they're on sale. <laughs> I said, well, uh, gee, how much are they? He said, a penny a piece. And I said, well, I'll, I'll take a dozen. He said, a dozen? I said, that's 12. OK. So they counted out 12 of these, and I reached in my pocket, and I came up with a diamond and a nickel. And I said, I don't have any pennies, but here's 15 cents. You can keep the change. Oh, boy. <laughs> so I take the dog and the leaves, and I just purchase, and go home, and I go in the door. My wife is preparing dinner. She looks at me, she says, so what's with the leaves? I said, um, I just bought them. <laughs> <laughs> a million leaves on the ground, you bought leaves? I said, well, these are special. They were hand-picked <laughs> by the twins at the corner. I said, oh, those are twins. I said, yeah, they're special too. And I remember them and those kids, and I miss them.